This instructional video will be going over the answers to the two exponent worksheets that you've already completed. Now on the first page, you're trying to find the missing exponents. So in this case, eight is our base number. We're missing the exponent, which is located by the variable. And we know that the answer is one. Our exponent is going to be a zero because anything to the zero power is one. So zero is our missing exponent. In number two, we have 100, which is our base number, x, which is our missing variable, and the answer is also 100. In this instance, the exponent is going to be a one because anything to the power of one is itself. So our missing exponent is one. In number three, our base number is 12. And we're missing the first exponent and then we have an exponent of four and our answer is going to be eight. Now, because this is a multiplication problem, we would add these exponents. The x plus the four would give us the answer eight. And so we're missing a positive four. Four plus four would give us the answer eight. For number four, we have the base numbers are six. We have the exponent 10. We have a missing exponent x, and then we have our equals, which is our exponent of 6. Now, in this problem, because it's a division problem, we would be subtracting our exponents. So 10 minus what gives us the answer 6? And that would be 4. 10 minus 4 gives us an exponent of 6. In number 5, we start off by raising to a power. And so we're going to do two times our variable, our unknown exponent that we're trying to find. Then we would subtract the 6 because we have a division sign. And when we're dividing, we subtract the exponents. And our answer is an 8. We can solve this like a two-step equation and work backwards. So instead of a minus 6, we do the opposite. We do a plus 6. 8 plus 6 would give us 14. And then instead of multiplying our 2, we can do the opposite and divide by 2, thus isolating the variable and finding that the missing exponent is 7. For number 6, we have our base numbers are 3, and we have our exponents, which are being multiplied, so we would add the exponent pieces, 3 plus 3, to get an answer of 6. We need the other side to also equal 6, and so we would add our exponents, 5 plus what, to equal 6 as well. We know that 5 plus 1 is equal to 6, so that missing exponent is going to be a 1. In number 7, we're going to take our exponents and we're going to multiply them 2 times 9 to get an answer of 18. We need the other side to also give us an answer of 18. So 3 times what number gives us 18? That would be 3 times 6. So 6 is our missing exponent. In number 8, we have our base numbers 2 that are being multiplied. So we would add the exponents 6 plus 12, which would give us 18. On the other side, we would be multiplying those exponents. So 2 times what would also give us that same exponent answer, 18. We know that 2 times 9 would give us that same answer of 18. So 9 is our missing exponent. In number 9, we have our base numbers 4 that are being multiplied. So we're going to add our exponents 3 and 5. And 3 and 5 is going to give us 8. On the other side, we're dividing, so we would subtract x minus 3. We also need the answer to be 8. And so we've got to figure out what number minus 3 equals 8. In this case, it would be an 11 minus 3, which equals 8. So our missing exponent is an 11. In number 10, we have multiple pieces to solve, so we're going to do it one step at a time. We're going to start with the top section that's being multiplied, so we would add our exponents, 0 plus 8, which would give us 8. 
To rewrite the problem, we would have 11 to the eighth power divided by 11 to the second power. Since we're dividing, we would subtract the exponents, 8 minus 2, to get 6. So we want our answer to be 11 to the sixth power. On the other side, we would be multiplying 2 times what, and we want that answer to be a 6. We know that 2 times 3 is 6, and so our missing exponent is a 3. Moving on to the other worksheet page, we are now dealing with negative exponents. So we're going to start off by doing the same thing. We are first multiplying in this first problem, so we would add the exponents 3 plus negative 6. 3 plus negative 6 would give us a negative 3, and so that answer would be 4 to the negative third. On the other side, we're also multiplying, so again, we want to add 5 plus what would give us the same answer, negative 3. You can solve all of these problems by working backwards. So we can take the 5 and do the opposite and do a minus 5. x would equal negative 3 minus 5, which would give us a negative 8. Our missing exponent is going to be a negative 8, which represented down at the bottom is represented by letter E. For number six, we are starting with our division problem, which means we are going to subtract negative eight minus two. Negative eight minus two is gonna give us a negative 10. And so our answer is two to the negative 10th power. Now on the other side, we would be multiplying these two exponents. And so we wanna know five times what is gonna give us that same answer, negative 10. Again, you can work backwards by taking the opposite operation. Instead of multiplying our exponents, we can divide our exponents and divide by 5. Negative 10 divided by 5 would give us a negative 2. Our missing exponent, negative 2, is represented by the letter S at the bottom. In problem number two, we're going to start off by multiplying our two exponents, negative three times two, which would give us a negative six. Our final answer would be five to the negative sixth power. We want to have that same answer on the other side of the problem. Again, we would multiply our exponents, so negative six times what would give us the same answer of negative six. Again, we can do the opposite operation. Instead of multiplying, we can divide by negative six. Two negatives would give us a positive, and six divided by six would give us one. The missing exponent would be a one, and is represented by the letter O at the bottom. For number seven, again, we start off by multiplying our exponents, negative two times three, which would give us a negative six v to the negative sixth power would be our answer. On the other side, we would be adding our exponents because it's a multiplication problem. We add the exponents. So six plus what would give us that same answer, negative six. Again, we do the opposite operation. So instead of plus six, we do a minus six. Negative six minus six would give us a negative 12. Negative 12 is our missing exponent and it is represented by the letter L down at the bottom. For number three, we start by subtracting our exponents because that's a division problem. And when we're dividing, we subtract the exponents. So we would subtract seven minus negative two. This type of problem is not possible in mathematics. So we change it from minus and a negative to positive and plus. Seven plus two is gonna give us nine meaning we have w to the ninth power as our final answer. On the other side, we're also dividing, so we would subtract the exponents. Our unknown exponent minus the bottom exponent two also needs to give us the same answer, nine. We solve the problem by doing the opposite operation. So instead of minus two, we do a plus two. Nine plus two is 11. 11 is our missing exponent, 
and it is represented by the letter E down at the bottom. For number eight, we're multiplying in the problem, so we would add our exponents together, three plus negative four, which would give us a negative one. G to the negative first power is our final answer. On the other side, we're dividing, so we would subtract our exponents, six minus the unknown variable, and we want the answer to still be the negative one. When we're solving this problem, we can do the opposite operation. And so we take our six and we do the opposite. We do a minus six. Negative one minus six would give us a negative seven. In front of this X here is still our minus sign. So we would still have an understood one in front of this X. Sometimes you can think of it as an imaginary one. We would do the opposite and we would divide by the negative one. And so our final answer would be a positive seven. Two negatives would make a positive. Our missing exponent is a seven, which is represented by the letter S down at the bottom. For number four, the first half of the problem is actually the multiplication part that we are missing, three in our unknown exponent. So we're gonna start with the right-hand side. The right-hand side is being multiplied, so we would add our exponents, negative two plus eight, which would end up with a positive six, nine to the sixth power. We can use that to fill in our other problem because we need the answer to also be a six. To solve it, we work backwards and do the opposite of, of multiplying by three. We divide by three to get our final answer of two. The missing exponent is a two, which is represented by the letter E at the bottom. For number nine, the problem starts off with a division problem that needs to be subtracted because we subtract our exponents. We have our unknown exponent minus a three, and we're not sure what it needs to equal yet. However, on the other side of the problem, we have a fraction. We know that any time we have a fractional exponent, it really means that the exponent was originally a negative exponent. All negative exponents have to be written as fractions. Therefore, the negative eight is the answer that we need to match on the other side. To solve the problem, we can work backwards. And so by instead of doing a minus three, we can do a plus three. Negative eight plus three would give us a negative five. Our missing exponent is the negative five and it's represented by the letter C down at the bottom. To start off number five, we would originally multiply our two exponents, two and the unknown. And then we have the division problem, which means we would subtract six. On the other side of the problem, we are multiplying, so we would add the two exponents, negative seven plus seven. When we add those together, we would get an answer of zero. We need zero to be the same answer on the other side of the problem. We can now work backwards to solve it. Instead of doing a minus six, we can do a plus six. Zero plus six is six. And then instead of multiplying by two, we can do the opposite. We can divide by two. Six divided by two is three. Three is our missing exponent and it is represented by the letter S down at the bottom. In number 10, we start with our fractional R, one over R to the third. Anytime we have a fractional exponent, we know that it was originally a negative exponent because all negative exponents are rewritten as fractions. So we're gonna use that negative three as our answer for the other side of the problem. On the other side of the problem, we are multiplying, so we're going to add the exponents, negative seven plus the unknown variable, and it's gonna equal our negative three that we found earlier. We can solve the problem by doing the opposite. So instead of a negative seven, we do the opposite, we do a positive seven. And negative three plus seven is gonna give us a positive four. 
our missing exponent is a positive 4 and is represented by the letter I down at the bottom. For the last problem, it has multiple pieces. We're going to start with the top section. The top section is being multiplied, meaning we would add the exponents negative 5 plus 14. Negative 5 plus 14 would give us an answer of 9. So our new problem is 10 to the 9th divided by 10 to the 3rd. Now that we're solving the division problem, we can subtract the exponents 10, 9 and 3 to get our final answer of 6, 10 to the 6th power. On the other side, it is also a division problem. So again, we're going to subtract our missing exponent, minus 2, and we need the answer to be the same. We need it to be equal 6. We solve it by doing the opposite operation. So instead of a minus 2, we do the opposite. We do a plus 2. And 6 plus 2 is going to give us 8. The missing exponent is an 8, which is represented by the letter C down at the bottom.